Good morning. What a great, great day it is to be here and to be at Southern Virginia University. President Sobraski, I hope you've got uh, all your remarks ready. I can make mine short. <laughs> okay. Unless the spirit just hits me, you know. So. Anyway, what a wonderful opportunity it is to be here, to be uh, at this conference. It is a 17th conference. Uh, I enjoy very much uh, letting Kathleen do this conference, wandering around in the back, uh, pretending that I'm busy sometimes and slipping out and coming back in again. And so that's kind of my routine. I will try uh, to do maybe a little bit uh, better today. But I want to begin by testifying to you that God lives and Jesus is the Christ and this is his restored church here upon the earth we are a part of his kingdom we live in the best time that we could ever live there is so much to be accomplished and because we are his children he blesses us he allows for us to feel the spirit he allows for us to accomplish his work. I have been privileged to be called as a patriarch. It's a very humbling uh, experience, extremely humbling. One that I don't think I will ever feel uh, capable of. And yet it brings to me and testifies to me the glorious events of the latter days and the things that we do as individual members. So as I give you a little presentation of the background of the university and give some recognition to it, I want for all of us to remember uh, how much we can do and how much we can accomplish. Uh, President Sobrowski, uh quoted, and I'm going to read in case I forget how to quote it, the 13th article of faith last night. And that has gone through my mind several times uh, as, uh, for years and years and years. And I think that we as members of the church need to do as much as we can to accomplish the work of the Lord. And that's certainly with inside our, our church callings, but our callings of eternity are even much larger than that of what we can accomplish to bring about the gathering of Israel in the latter days. We believe in being honest, true, chaste, benevolent, virtuous, and in doing good to all men. Indeed, we may say we follow the admonition of Paul Sobrowski. I added that to, to our modern language. We believe all things and hope to be able to endure all things if there is anything virtuous lovely or of good report or praiseworthy we seek after these things this university is virtuous it's of good report it's praiseworthy and it was intended to be here in this place at this time I will give you the story I don't necessarily like to do that uh, but I will, I will give you the story if you'll uh, bear with me and I'll try to make it exciting. I have some people to help me uh, make it exciting. But I would like to pay tribute to the thousands and thousands of students now who have graduated from this university. I would like to pay tribute to the faculty to the board members, to the administration, all that have made contributions to this university, now coming close to 20 years. Uh, very, very uh, much uh, accomplished, but still in its infancy. But I know that it is right. And I'll tell you that story as to uh, how we hung on, some of the things that we did. But I'm gonna have a little bit of help uh, right now. And we have, uh, Taylor Winslow, uh, sister, I was going to call her Taylor Swift, but uh, <laughs> Taylor Winslow uh, will be just fine. And Max Doxy, Taylor uh, graduated from the university uh, this past spring, one of our outstanding students, and uh, Max uh, is our current uh, student body, will be serving as our student body president. 
So I'm going to give you five years. Now, this, uh, this information was compiled by Chris Pendleton. Uh, there's a lot of information that everyone would have of the accomplishments in their lives and what has happened at the university. I'm going to have them give you bullet points really quickly, and I'm going to, I'm going to give you five years and you see if it was worth it, and then I'll give you the beginning as to how it started. So we'll begin with Taylor. Let's hit it really hard, you guys. Your job is to make me look good. <laughs> 2008-2009 academic school year. The Southern Virginia women's soccer won the United States Collegiate Athletic Association National Championship. November 2008, President and Sister Faust honored with Southern Virginia's Leader Servant Award. December 2008, faculty member Orson Scott Card's new book named a New York Times bestseller. February 2009, Southern Virginia opened a new cafe, Jonesy's, in the remodeled Student Center. March 2009, a new 18,000 square foot meeting house and institute building to house the largest daytime institute of religion in the eastern states was dedicated on the campus of Southern Virginia. April 2009, the Southern Virginia Chamber Choir performed an Easter concert at the Washington DC Temple Visitor Center. June 2009, the Commission of Colleges of the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools authorized a candidacy committee to visit Southern Virginia. And in June 2009, for the third year in a row, the Southern Virginia Knights were awarded the United States Collegiate Athletic Association Director's Cup, which is presented annually to the top program in the USCAA. Two thousand nine, two thousand ten, academic year. September two thousand nine, Southern Virginia completed three new multi-purpose fields constructed on seventeen acres of university-owned land adjacent to campus. September two thousand nine, Southern Virginia seniors who participated in the Collegiate Learning Assessment performed better than ninety-three percent of seniors nationally who participated. February two thousand ten. A candidacy committee from the Commission of Colleges of the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools visited campus. March 2010, Southern Virginia, along with Remote Area Medical, hosted a free medical clinic that provided needed medical, dental, and eye care for nearly 700 patients. March 2010, Barbara Crawford, professor at Southern Virginia, made history as an assistant to the famous artist Cy Twombly creating a painting in a covers, to cover a ceiling in the Louvre. June 2010, the Commission of Colleges of the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools awarded regional accreditation candidacy to Southern Virginia. Two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, academic school year. September two thousand ten, Southern Virginia celebrates its fifteenth academic year serving the Latter Day Saint community. September two thousand ten, Southern Virginia hosted the Mormon Theology Seminar Conference entitled "Embracing the Law: A Scholarly Conference on Doctrine and Covenants 42." October twenty ten, Southern Virginia names newly remodeled student center the Kimball Student Center in honor of J. Golden Kimball. March 2011, the Southern Virginia men's basketball team claimed its first USCAA Men's Division I National Championship. April 2011, Southern Virginia announced intent to explore membership in the National Collegiate Athletic Association Division III. April 2011, the Southern Virginia Orchestra and Concert Chorale presented an Easter concert at the U. Washington, D.C. Temple Visitor Center. May 2011, Southern Virginia designated a new home for the Alumni Association, the Fawson Alumni House. June 2011, Southern Virginia named a recently donated apartment complex, the Gale Smith Apartments. The 2011 and 2012 academic year uh, has a a very big list. Um, part of this list is I started school here. So, <laughs> August 2011, Southern Virginia's student enrollment reached an all-time record of more than 800 students. August 2011, Southern Virginia received a donation from Rodney K. Smith to fund a new professorship, the Willis J. Smith Professorship of Philosophy. 
September 2011, Southern Virginia received the donation of a new electronic Carillon bell, bell system from Richard and Lana Whitehead that many of you probably heard today. It's November 2011. The Southern Virginia women's cross country team won the United States, United States Collegiate Athletic Association National Championship. November 2011, on a national survey, the Noel Lovitz Student Satisfaction Inventory, Southern Virginia students expressed higher levels of satisfaction in nearly every category of the survey than students at private colleges nationally. November 2011, an accreditation committee from the Commission on Colleges of the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools visited Southern Virginia for three days and reported that the committee had no formal recommendations to which the university must respond. December 2011, Michael Elton, a member of the Southern Virginia Board of Trustees and his wife Kay, created the Elton Lectureship for Outstanding Teaching and Scholarship to be awarded to one Southern Virginia professor annually. December 2011, on the 2010 National Survey of Student Engagement, 98% of Southern Virginia seniors said that they would pick the university again if they had the chance. The university also outperformed the average for all participating schools in every major category on the survey. January 2012, Southern Virginia student a cappella group The Fading Point released its first EP album available as a CD and on more than 20 websites um, to download, including iTunes. March 2012, Remote Area Medical returned to Southern Virginia's campus to offer a free health clinic that provided needed medical, dental, and vision care for more than 600 patients. The Southern Virginia, March 2012, the Southern Virginia Concert Chorale performed in concert with Liberty University Concert Choir and the Roanoke Symphony Orchestra and Chorus in the Roanoke Performing Arts Theater. March 2012, a new survey found that all of Southern Virginia alumni who sought full-time employment Nearly 9 in 10 were employed within the first 12 months of graduation. More than 4 in 10 had started a graduate professional certificate or licensure program, and many more were engaged in worthwhile pursuits, including missionary service and homemaking. April 2012, the first young single adult stake of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints outside of Utah or Idaho was formed to serve members of the Buena Vista, Virginia, and Roanoke, Virginia stakes, including students of Southern Virginia. May 2012, Mormon Scholars in the Humanities held its sixth annual conference at Southern Virginia. June 2012, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges, the oldest, largest, and most prestigious accreditor of colleges and universities in the Southern United States awarded regional accreditation to Southern Virginia. July 2012, NCAA Division III awarded provisional membership to Southern Virginia. And July 2012, Southern Virginia announced that it will join the Capital Athletic Conference on July 1st, 2013. And finally, the 2012-2013 academic school year. August 2012, Southern Virginia launched a $50 million capital campaign at two gala events in Utah. November 2012, the U Southern Virginia women's cross country team repeated as United States Collegiate Athletic Association national champions. November 2012, Southern Virginia announced the creation of a new block program for young men and women preparing for and returning from full-time missionary service. December 2012, Southern Virginia announced that its football team will join the New Jersey Athletic Conference in 2014. And January 2013, Southern Virginia installed a new lighting system for the fields to facilitate increased flexibility in practice and competition times. To continue that same academic year, in March 2013, Southern Virginia and Buena Vista City co-sponsored the first annual 5K for 5K to raise funds for Southern Virginia and area schools. April 2013, on the 2012 National Survey of Student Engagement, 98% of Southern Virginia seniors rated the quality of the relationships they had with their professors above average. As in previous years, Southern Virginia outperformed the national average for private universities in every major category of the survey. April 2013, Southern Virginia announced the creation of two new mission preparation ca summer camps for youths and single adults. April 2013, the Southern Virginia Concert Chorale performed a second concert with the Liberty University Concert Choir and Roanoke Symphony Orchestra and Chorus and others in the Roanoke Performing Arts Theater. 
April 2013, the Southern Virginia men's basketball team finished their season with a record-breaking 17-7 record and continuing a program best 28-game home winning streak. April 2013, Mitt Romney spoke at Southern Virginia's largest commencement ceremony ever. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're impressed with this list from the last five years, please stay tuned for the next five years for a list that will knock your socks off. <laughs> Are they terrific or what? You know, I would sooner, I, I say it would, it's a lot more fun to make history than it is to study history or to go back. They're making history. Uh, these are the things that are happening uh, here at the uh, university. I will now, uh, because I wanted you to hear that, what we are, what we have become. Uh, I will give you a little bit of the background and my story may be the most insignificant story of all. Uh, the stories that we hear day after day uh, are magnificent stories of what has transpired and happened in the lives of individuals. And so I will tell you a little bit uh, not to bore you about the journey and uh, allow for you to assess, but uh, I still want to remind you that most of the incredible personal stories we don't even know. But I do know that it has touched the lives of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people and will continue to do so. It was my birthday, March the 11th, and we were gathered together uh, with a few people. Uh, the Wileys are here. I think they were at that little birthday party. And, uh, and uh, I can't remember how old I was, but I was a little bit younger. I wasn't 20. Kathleen goes for older men, so <laughs> I thought I would keep my, my status as a senior. Uh, but uh, we were gathered for a, for a birthday party, and uh, I was serving as stake president. And I had my counselors and some other friends that were there. And one of my counselors was Robert, uh, or was Bob Wiley. Uh, but uh, Brother Barris uh, was, uh, was my counselor. And he presented uh, to me uh, at that time, Roger said, uh, uh, are you interested in buying a university? And I said, absolutely not, <laughs> no. And it was kind of the end of the discussion. Now, I say that because I want you to know that I have never, ever, ever had a dream of starting a university. Buying horses, competing, uh, businesses, and doing those things, and doing my family and church things, yes. But I never, ever, ever uh, thought of a university. Uh, in fact, uh, I spent a lot of time at the BYU, five years, couldn't decide what I was supposed to go into, and Vietnam caught me in my senior year and, and drafted me, and I did uh, some of the uh, work at some of the universities here, but never was that fascinated with academia. Sorry about that, but I just, just wasn't, it wasn't my world. And so as the party went on, uh, Roger said, it has horses. <laughs> I, said, I said, really? And, and he said, here, let me show you the pictures. And so he showed me the pictures and uh, he, he had put together a beautiful book. And uh, I knew nothing of the history. Uh, I knew where Washington Lee was and VMI, and I, I knew about the school, uh, but nothing uh, about the history. And he gave me the beautiful book, and I said, I will take a look. So probably a week later, uh, I was visiting some properties, and I drove up over the mountain and uh, came up the hill. And as I drove up the hill, it began to look like the back entryway to the Mazer building. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the Mazer building. I started in animal science, and that's where all the classes were taught, and they were small classes. And so I was fascinated as I drove up, and the campus uh, was stunning. And so being 
a real estate person, I thought, this is a nice piece of real estate. But there was kind of a, a, a special feeling and a special passion. As you come up the hill this way, uh, there was a, a sign that said where the administrative buildings were, and it also had at the bottom, it said, Equestrian Center. Well, I passed all the administrative buildings, and I came to the Equestrian Center, which is right here. And in the indoor arena, which is our, our uh, basketball court, a few of the students were still... Now you'll get me emotional, because we're getting into the horses. We're still riding their horses. I get emotional over other things. Uh, they were riding their horses. They had their, their instructor with them. They knew that the school was closing. And they were, they were nationally ranked uh, in their equestrian program. I don't do hunter jumper, and so that part wasn't uh, as uh, impressive uh, to me. But I watched them. The indoor arena was a state of the art. It had an overhead sprinkling system. The sand was perfect. Those stairwells uh, that we go down now into the basketball court was for the horses to walk. It was just on a grade were for the horses uh, to walk. And these, this area were the stalls. And this is where the horses were. The horses came with the university. And, and they had beautiful uh, manicured stalls. They were, just, they, were, they were just as clean as could be. The students did service work. And each stall had a plaque on it. And it was donated by Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so and donated by Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so as a tribute to the school. And, and I, I walked past every stall. I read every plaque, and I don't read the plaques in the museum. Uh, I read every plaque. I talked to the kids and uh, asked them what they were going to do. And they said, we don't know. We love the university. Uh, we don't know where we're going to go to school. Uh, it's been closed. They had lost their accreditation from Sachs and uh, were financially in tough shape. And so they were closing the school. Uh, it had been rumored that it was going to be sold uh, for a women's prison. Uh, what a great place you know, to go if it was a prison. That was part of the rumor. I left the, the, the horse stalls and walked into the back doors of Main Hall and was absolutely touched by the grace and the charm of that building, uh, beautiful artwork. Uh, it was a step back in, in history. And the, the fireplace, and uh, there was nobody, no one in there. And I walked through uh, the halls and uh, had, a, had a special feeling. And I went to the, uh, went to the lunchroom, because I spent a lot of time in Cougar Eat uh, at the BYU. And I went to the lunchroom, and uh, it was better than the Cougar Eat. They had, even though they were Western, they had Western saddles, they had bales of straw, and they had the recognition of this nationally ranked equestrian team in the lunchroom. They were proud of it. And I walked through the doors of the lunchroom, looked at the memorabilia, stepped into where the tables were, and I could see the kitchen to the left. And as sure as I have felt anything, the spirit saturated me. It, it drenched me uh, in this warm feeling. And it became very clear to me uh, that I needed to do something. And the impression was this that this cafeteria will someday be filled with LDS students. It seemed impossible. I had heard many say, why doesn't the church start a uh, university in the East? And uh, I just listened and I would say, because they don't want to. And uh, if they want to, they will. Uh, but it was so clear to me. I could see faces of young, the, the ones that are there now, coming in and enjoying 
the spirit in that uh, in that hall. I left, went back to Roger. <clears throat> He said, how did it go? And I said, I was impressed. I felt the spirit. And we were in a uh, pilot program for the church uh, uh, at that time for missionary work, the Ammon model of, of missionary work. And I jotted down as I left, I said, on, on the two little brick pillars, they're old and not uh, up to much, but I said, uh, uh, I would like to have on there, learn that life is service. It's there. Uh, that impression came to me and they were kind enough to put it there and that's a, at the entry uh, as we come in. I was involved in service uh, with Dennis Webb who was the, the mission president and we loved it because it was a pilot program of the church. Those of you in church leadership, if you can get a pilot program of the church, that means you can kind of go out of the bounds a little bit and, and do some exciting, fun things. And, and we were just having a blast. Uh, the most productive time that I've ever had. And I told Dennis about it. And, uh, and I told Roger that uh, I would go to work on it. Uh, I was to go out for a conference. Uh, I called uh, uh, Elder Don Ladd and said, uh, I won't be out for a conference, uh, which I'm sure they wouldn't miss me. But uh, I said, it won't be to conference. Uh, I may be buying a university. <laughs> and, and he said, uh, really? Uh, and it was very quick. He said, I said, what do you think about it? And he said, well, I think it's great, but be sure you don't tie it to the church. Do not. Do not say that the church is interested in it or anything uh, about the church. And so I promised uh, that I would do that. Uh, we, we had uh, 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 David Farrell was the area authority. And I called David, and he was working with our stake in the same program, and I said, when you go out to conference, uh, I'm going to be working on the purchase of a university. Would you seriously consider, uh, while you're there, of serving as the president of the university? And he said, uh, you know, why? And I said, well, uh, I've been thinking very strong about it, and the BYU has a general authority. Uh, if this is going to be in our area, then the president really should be an area authority. Uh, we'll follow as close as we can uh, to it. And anyway, he, uh, uh, he called me back the next morning, and he said, uh, I couldn't sleep. He said, uh, uh, if it comes about, I will serve as president. So I thought, well, I'm on my way. I got a president, and now I've got to figure out how to do the university. <laughs> so, so I began to call people that I knew at the church, uh, the stake presidents, uh, uh, academic uh, leaders, all members of the church, and I said, look, if, if we put together a university here, would you serve on the board? Everyone said yes, uh, with a smile. Crazy idea. Uh, they said yes, and we had some wonderful, absolutely terrific. Uh, 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 people. Don Davis uh, was uh, uh, a senior vice president of CSX and former stake president in our stake. And he was a mentor for me. And, and I bounced a lot of ideas uh, off from him. But Roger and I went to work. Uh, we involved no attorneys, uh, went by the spirit, drafted up what we should do, Bottom line, within 60 days, we took over the university. Now, here's how it happened. Uh, we, uh, we went to the board of directors, a very prestigious, wonderful group of, of men and women, leaders in the community, with a rich, rich heritage. This university is older than the BYU. And uh, a lot of pride in what they had done. And, and I said, we will be presenting to you our concept of what this university should be. And uh, we will present it, and I will present to you a slate of board members. And if you accept uh, what we have in mind, uh, my recommendation would be that your board members, with the exception of two, would resign so that we'd have some continuity uh, it, with the board, and they would resign and elect a new board of directors and will take over the school. 
they were having difficulty with their bonds and their financing. Uh, Prime at that time had uh, gone up to 20, 21%, much different time uh, than, than it is now. I had met with the banks and said, uh, look, I think that I could pull something off. Uh, the total indebtedness was only about five uh, million dollars. So we, uh, we presented to the board the concept Every pr and as we said, these are our standards, these are our deals. There's no smoking, this is, this is. And, and every one of them, not one person said, we don't quite like those standards. They said, we love those. It's a Christian standard, we love those. Those are the standards that we've tried to maintain here. They were 100% in harmony uh, with what we had uh, presented to them. So we go into the board meeting, do the formal, uh, the people resign. Uh, the uh, new board is elected, and I said, in 60 days, I've done my job. I'm through, it's done. The mayor greeted us, the press was there, and, uh, and they said, we've been praying for a miracle, that the lights on the hill would continue to burn. And you are that miracle, and the lights will continue to burn. So, as part of the negotiations, uh, I took on the liabilities, personally took on the liabilities of the university uh, and indemnified uh, all of the board members uh, against any suits or anything that would uh, come to them. And I felt comfortable doing that. Uh, they had a million dollars uh, cash in the bank. Uh, we took over the million dollars. I had started many companies. I didn't, uh, never had that much money to start a company with. And so I said, we're well on our way. Uh, Dennis Webb, I'll give, you, I'll, give, I'll give you some facts that you won't get any other place and we'll never talk about them again, but Dennis Webb and I came up and, uh, and uh, uh, our new president asked what his security was going to be. And, and we said, whatever you make it, you know, you're as secure as, as you can make it and grow. And uh, each of us uh, cut a check, uh, and uh, I'll tell you, we, we cut a check for $25,000. It was huge. And, and uh, I thought, well, that should take care of them. That, that will cover them for uh, some period of time, and uh, we're, we're on our way. The board begged me to uh, remain on as chairman. And I said, that's not, that's not what I do. I, I'm chairman of a number of public companies, and, and I do that in business, but I, I'm not, uh, that's not the person that I am. Uh, in 60 days, and they said, well, just do it well. 17th year and, and six presidents, and, and I still don't know anything about academia, and I'm, and, uh, I'm here as the, uh, the chairman. Uh, marvelous things happened. Uh, we, we also received a check uh, from Governor Allen, George Allen, uh, for a half million dollars. And the state uh, had a policy when there was a surplus. So it was in different days as well, but there was a surplus. And so they had a, a policy. And Goodlatte, who is was very popular here, is very supportive of the university. And so he had petitioned that it would help save the university if they would give some money. So it was always in process. And by the time it happened, we had taken it over. And so we got a check for a half million dollars, took over a million dollars uh, uh, of the funds. And we went with the, uh, uh, with the uh, current uh, president uh, up to Washington, D.C. Uh, to make a petition uh, up there uh, as to what we were doing and why they had lost their uh, Colonel Ripley uh, was the then acting president, and he had been to Washington D.C. and we went up to Washington D.C. and uh, we uh, uh, met uh, up there with a number of people, uh, but we met with Buck McEwen, McKeon, Buck McKeon from California, from California, and uh, a congressman, and he had been fighting uh, to keep the school alive. Uh, because he thought it was very unfair that they lost uh, their accreditation, that it just was not right. 
And so he had been fighting with it. Then the newspaper came out and said that a group of Mormon business people had taken over the university. And so he was accused of knowing that that was what was going on. And so that was why he was in the fight uh, to save the university. It wasn't for uh, the existing group, but he knew that there were LDS people involved. So he had uh, sharpened his sword and he was uh, in the battle with us. And so we had, we had a number uh, of things that had transpired uh, uh, in that regard as, uh, as we uh, took over the, the school. We had a president, we had a board, there was no doubt as to what the mission was. The academics have always been high. Uh, it has been many times a, a struggle, no more, so, no more than it is to build uh, anything. Uh, but the vision uh, was always there and never ever uh, deviated uh, from the cause and the mission of the school. Now we had a university. Nobody knew it but us. <laughs> and, and there were a few other people that found out and they were in the world of academia and they all wanted to come here and teach. So we could have filled it up with teachers and professors and we had no students. And uh, so, again, it was 30 days from the time that I came up here until the time we took over the university. It was getting time for school to start, and we needed students. And, uh, you know, and just paying the electricity up here does take something, and the staff and, and whatnot. So, uh, with David Fer Farrell, who was the area authority, I said, look, the only thing that I know to do, I was serving as stake president, I said, I know that we cannot use the church directory. But... Prepare the nicest, kindest letter. Tell our story, and and uh, here's the church directory, and uh, and I will repent later, and and get it out. It's the only way we have, and and you can imagine as I greatly appreciate knowing members of the church as we are, if that group of people were available for anybody to send any idea, whether it was New Skin or, or Amway or anything else, they would be bombarded or any new business. And so it's a good policy. And I thought, this is really doing good. If there's anything virtuous, lovely, or a good report, this certainly fits into that category, so we'll go ahead and do it. Uh, Elder Featherstone uh, gave me a call about a week after it had gone out, and he said, look, Somebody complained. Uh, he said it was probably uh, a professor at one of the universities that got the notice and he knew that you can't solicit it and they can't solicit their program. And so uh, don't do it again. And I said, okay, that's all right. So I came up to the campus and I said, President, uh, I'm grateful that you got the letters out, but don't ever do it again. You know, we got caught. And uh, don't ever do it again. And he said, oh, I just made the second mailing. <laughs> so, I'm in big trouble now. And uh, so I said, actually, I was glad that he did. I said, uh, well, I'll take the heat on it. So. Uh, and this is just a part of the personal stuff uh, th that uh, was uh, along the journey. But uh, at that time, uh, Elder Featherstone, uh, who if you know him, is the, the, he is the only Featherstone in the world. He's just such a unique, unique person, such a unique person. And, and he was excited about what we were doing, and he was very supportive. And he called and he said, look, don't worry about it, but you will get a letter from the church. And uh, a little reprimand for what you've done. And I thought, I usually hear good things from the church, and I wasn't worried. And he kept calling me and saying, have you got the letter yet? And I'd say, no, don't worry about it. And uh, so finally the letter came. And understandably, from a legal standpoint, the church uh, needed to send it out. Uh, I'll have to admit, it made me feel bad for a little bit because I was trying to do good things. And uh, I got it from Marlon Jansen. <laughs> and, uh, we, and it was, it was beautifully crafted. He's a great attorney. 
<laughs> and, uh, and a great brother, and I love him, and, and we've had such a great journey. Uh, but I knew that uh, I knew that it was wrong, and, and uh, I've repented. And Elder Jensen said that he's repented as well. So that that segment went on. But we had 75, 78, 79 kids that uh, that showed up, and I'm going to wrap up in just a second. We had 70 some odd kids that showed up at our doorsteps. We had some of the best professors uh, that came here and are still here, some remained. These 70 kids felt the same thing that I had felt. They didn't come from Virginia. I can't remember one that came from Virginia. They came from other parts of the country, most of them out west. And they felt inspired to come here. Most, if not all of them, had been accepted to other universities. These were bright, intelligent kids. And you talk, and that's why I say their story is more important than mine. They're, they were seeking an education where they could go out and get a job and make their mark in the world. And they came to this university knowing nothing about it. And they brought the sweetest, kindest spirit and talent. We didn't have a music department, Mr. Carter, and they organized their own music department. They had a choir. They had, they had everything. They were, they were on fire up here. And it was so impressive to see what they, uh, what they were able to accomplish. The mascot, when we took over the university, uh, was a horse as well. And it was a filly. And uh, so I presented to the student body. They organized really quickly with a very powerful student body, and they were in charge and, and knew what they were doing. And so I presented to them, and I said, I would love to have, as our mascot, the Colts and the Phillies, because we were becoming a uh, uh, co-educational uh, 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 university. And uh, I said, I'd like to have the Colts and the Phillies. And I could see two little horses with their heads down, and uh, that would be our mascot. And they came back, not me, they came back and uh, said, we want to call it the Knights. And I said, oh, you don't want to do that. You want to do it anyway. They did. I like it. It's really fun to have them say, go Knights, go Knights. And, and, uh, and it's incredible. The journey continues and goes on and on. A great friend of mine, if you see the, the mascot out there, Bob Booth uh, offered to uh, uh, a sculpture and to build that, uh, put on the full armor of God. That's life and a quarter size. One of the most spectacular uh, bronzes, I think, in the world. Just like that is life and a quarter uh, in size. The students, the university, the faculty, everyone associated with this university are life and a size, life and a quarter in size. They're bigger than life. The mission of this university is bigger than any of us. It has always been bigger than me. I love the journey because I know that the Lord wanted for me to do it. I tell the young people, if you want to have a boring life, take control of it yourself and decide where you're going to go. If you want to have an exciting, exhilarating, fun, packed life, go by the Spirit where the Lord wants you to go. And you'll find that it's more exciting than anything that you can do. That's a little bit of the story. But the story goes on. I also have uh, a uh, wonderful student that was taking uh, English from Jeff Benedict, who is renowned. And uh, in 2008, uh, put together uh, through interview, and it's pretty accurate uh, through 2008, the story. Uh, uh, she titles it The Man Behind the Miracle. It's, it's more uh, than me, but there's a lot in here that is absolutely correct, including the early players and the early people that were uh, involved in it and what happened. And then she gave the salutatorian address, and in that address uh, she spoke of the founding of the university. 
I made copies. They're in three big boxes in the back. Uh, they are free uh, back there. If you want them, uh, you can have them. Uh, and it pretty well uh, tells the story. Inspiration, revelation. This is the day. It's so abundant. If we don't harden our hearts and if we listen to the Spirit, may we do so as my prayer, and I say it in Jesus' name. Amen.